Which is why every citizen will find a complimentary government-issued aerosol can waiting in the mailbox. Get to spraying, America! Let's heat this mother up! This has been an announcement from the President of the United States. What gives, Sam? You missed your cue! What? Oh, sorry, little buddy in chief. I'm still thinking about our last case. The internet said it was working for somebody named Roy G. Biv. Obviously a pseudonym, but for who? Or whom? We're detectives, Sam, not mind readers! Hey, maybe we should ask you Bliss! Mind readers, that's it! No, that's not it. By the way, have you seen my copy of Emetics, the Handbook for Multicolored Happiness by Hugh Bliss? Colors? No. Think, Max, think. Well, I know I had it this morning. That's it. Morning. In the ancient tongue of the mud-worshipping Kapalahotek tribe of the Serengeti, our word morning means he who destroys the hypnotic rainbow man. That's the word he fears the most. So this Roy G. Biv is the one person we've met who's never said the word morning. And that means it's... It's the Commissioner. The Commissioner? I never did trust him. No, Chowderhead. It's Hugh Bliss. Never! What? Oh, no, Commissioner. I didn't mean... Look, I need you to put out an APB on Hugh Bliss. Stat! By the Greek goddess Selene in a chariot with dual overhead cams and silver fox mud flaps. We're on our way. Let's go, Max. The Commissioner said that Hugh Bliss is currently staying at his exclusive prismatology retreat, the Blister of Tranquility. Oh, boy! I bet it's somewhere really cool and exotic, like a remote island in the South Pacific or Des Moines. Even farther, pal. We're going to the moon. Feels good to be back on the moon, doesn't it? We made good time, too. We've still got plenty of generic brand powdered orange flavored drink mix left. You always did know how not to infringe on a registered trademark, little buddy. What are we doing first, Sam? Let's locate the blister of tranquility, find out what you bliss is up to, and arrest his unprincipled magical butt. Is that a visitor center? All righty. Howdy neighbors, welcome back to Let's Play Sam and Max Save the World. This is episode 6, the final episode of season 1. Uh, this is like my second favorite episode, just because uh, things, I don't know, it's just a good episode. Puzzles are really creative, and I hope I remember enough of it to not make myself look like an idiot, although I probably will. What do you have to say, Max? Help me out with something. Sure! <laughs> Never mind. Uh. How does it do that when there's no wind on the moon? The magic of video game powers. Also, I love it when intros... I love the whole intro part where he's like, oh, I bet it's this thing or that thing. And all those poos point to few bliss, but he's just off. And Max just keeps repeating it. It's not as funny now that I explained it. Orally, that is. It's a lunar lander. So is my Aunt Tilly, but they can't prove anything. Hmm, let's see what this is. That's about. quite a rocket engine. I don't remember what order to do things in. I know the order doesn't really matter. The order, the correct order, just makes things faster. Lunar lander. It looks cleaner from far away. Sure does. 
also the music is really loud. Ah, oh, my ears. There we go. I think the reason it desynced last time is because I clicked something in the window. Lovely shirt. Can I get one, Sam? Can I, can I, can I, can I? You don't wear shirts, Max. I can still accumulate them, can't I? Harry, hey, you're the mole guy from the One moment, episodes please. ago. I'm supposed to frisk everybody when they leave. Just a formality. We understand. Not there, though. Don't touch Okay, there. go ahead. That's a part of the well, puzzle. Well, well. Aren't you Teddy Bear? Once upon a time, but no longer. Who are you supposed to be, then? Who are you now? I've gone back to being Harry Mole Man. Or should I say, I've gone forward. Prismatology has helped me find a new me where the old one used to be. Okay. Are you still a notorious criminal? Or an obscure one, like Kevin Mitnick? No, I've repostulated my lemma since Prismatology found me. It's the straight and narrow for Harry Mole Man from here on out. Right. You seem shorter than you used to. I used to use that exoskeleton, but prismatology has taught me that size doesn't matter. Color does! Harry Mole Man will never be sensitive about being diminutive again! Or about referring to himself in the third person, apparently. Uh-huh. Right, uh, I'd work on phrasing there, Mr. Mole Man. Didn't you explode? Only in the spiritual sense. Prismatology helped me put Harry Mole Man back together again. Looks like it may have left out a few pieces by mistake. Well, I guess it's nice to see you again. Actually, I'm still a little sore that he tried to get you to shoot me last time we saw him. I'm channeling my saturation towards making amends for my past transgressions. Prismatology has taught me... Yeah, yeah, we get it. So what are you doing here? I monitor the visitor's center and answer people's questions. Security guard, huh? Docent! I'm a docent! Same thing, whatever docent means, pretty much the same thing. What sights should we see while we're here on the moon? Have you seen the lunar lander over there? We passed by Excuse it, yes. Me, my door How about open. the blister of tranquility? Nope. Just gonna grab oh, my laundry well, I did earlier. Goodness. It's still in its you should definitely see that. Door. I'm just going to pretend I heard all that. Which way to the blister of tranquility? Enlightenment is the only way to reach the blister of tranquility. How about we enlighten your skull a little? Would that work? The blister is through that little box right over there. <laughs> Seen Hugh Bliss around here lately? To see the master, I need only search my heart. I meant see him in the traditional fashion. No. He's usually in the blister these days. Okay. See you later. We've got important sightseeing to do. Great! One at... moment, please. Don't touch you there. Okay. Well, look at this. It looks like cheap touristy crap is the same everywhere in the solar system. Can we get some cheap touristy crap, Sam? No. What kind of currency do they use on the moon? Junkets. How appropriate. What's supposed to go here? These hypnotic goggles were an early prototype of the hypnobeam technology currently being used to further the worldwide goals of prismatology. Wow! Invisible goggles! The goggles were stolen a few months ago. Honestly, some people will take anything that's not bolted to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> that was a sick burn. What's this? Looks like a bent spoon with some peanut butter on it. The power to bend and rebend spoons stored within this completely indestructible magical talisman was among the first mental abilities to be developed and popularized by Hugh Bliss. Big deal. I can bend spoons with my bare hands. One question. Would it work on wrenches? Hmm. Yeah, a wrench is close enough. 
Interesting, interesting. Ah, you made me forget where I was. Let's see, uh, indestructible magical talent. Oh yeah, the virtually indestructible display case is a triumph of modern prismatological science. Virtually indestructible? Extensive testing has been done on the case, showing it to be impervious to bullets, acid, high falls, crushing force, sonic weaponry, diamond tip drills, hurricanes, poisons, cynicism, and liquid nitrogen. Don't touch it. You might break it. Oops. It's not held down very securely. Uh-huh. Well, we see... Snow globe. These look oddly familiar. As you see, getting the puzzle here is to get this spoon thing away out of here without him taking it. What's with the charm? That was worth. I bet it sense. shows how Justin Timberlake is descended from the Moon People. This chart outlines Hugh Bliss's ingenious master plan to hypnotize everyone on Earth through connections with the U.S. government, the Internet, and the Toy Mafia. Well, I was close. Weren't you in charge of the Toy Mafia? You're right. I was. I wonder why I didn't know anything about this at the time. Apparently, Hugh Bliss was using hypnotic teddy bears, a hypnotic computer game, a hypnotic presidential dummy, and a host of minions to implement his dastardly plan. Apparently, we could have come up to the moon and read all about it at any time. <laughs> As you can see, when we leave, you will check our pockets. One moment, please. I'm supposed to frisk everybody when they leave. And when he does, Just a formality. When he does of that, of course. Uh -huh. He takes the thing What's we're trying this? to get. I knew you were up to something. Ruining my career with the toy mafia wasn't enough. Now you want to cost me this job too? Yes. It must have fallen into my pocket while I was looking at your beautiful ceiling architecture. What mafia? Don't try that again, or I'll have to get ugly. I guess a lot of people have done it already. Yes, but I always. Hey. All right. Mechanical suit. Oh, look, there's a slightly beat up robotic exoskeleton in the trash. The past is only useful as fertilizer for the future. Hugh Bliss said that. Ah. Whee! Bye, Max. Hi, Max. What's this? Picnickers, please do not use craters for waste disposal. Whoops! <laughs> Only you can prevent moon fires. Uh -huh. Dust preservation area. Please stay on marked paths. Buzz, we got tired of waiting, so we went on without you. Meet you back at the orbiter. No parking between the hours of 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. Warning. Wild lunar yaks have been sighted in this area. If you encounter a wild lunar yak, try to make yourself look large, then shriek like a schoolgirl and hightail it for the hills. Picnickers, please do not use craters for waste disposal. Okay, it's repeating now. Anything all the way over here? New? Okay. I think I can look at one of these craters real quick. Real quick. No, I guess that was just the remaster. Hey, small worlds. It's our favorite cabinet secretary and secret service man, Agent Superball. Favorite? That'd be like choosing a favorite child, Sam. I love them all. Didn't I see you last week beating the secretary of defense over the head with his own war agenda? Granted, it's a tough love. Greetings, newcomers. Blessed be. What you doing here, Mr. Superball? So let me guess. You're guarding the door to this retreat. Affirmative. I have a passion for it, sir. And Hugh Bliss believed in my door guarding abilities when no one else would. Great story, great story. Okay, let us in. Negative. Only level red prismatologists may enter Hugh Bliss's magical paradise. What's a level red prismatologist? Because I'm pretty sure I am one. Level red is apex of prismatology, sir. You'd have to undergo spectrum analysis to determine your current level. Spectrum analysis? Is that where you lie perfectly still in a lead coffin while brightly colored cotton swabs are inserted into various orifices? Yeah. You know, sir, we gave that up in 87. It's much simpler now. 
Yep, we're level red. Let us in. I'm sure you're mistaken, but we'll run the spectrum analysis anyway. Take this. A unicorn? What am I supposed to do with this? Rub it, sir. Rub it, Sam. <laughs> Harder. Harder. I'm sorry, sir. The unicorn says you're yellow. No one calls us yeller! Draw, partner! Level yellow is frankly rather pathetic, sir. Only level reds may enter the retreat. Regulations? Hmm. However, Hugh Bliss would like you to keep the unicorn as a token of his love. Rub it often to measure your progress towards true bliss. Oh boy, a pet unicorn! I shall call him Horny. You do that. Another puzzle. Two puzzles to solve. Just in one room. Well, actually, I guess it's all over the place. How does that unicorn work anyway? By magic, sir. Right. Either that, or it's just a glorified mood ring that reacts to body heat. A mood horn! You're not a believer, sir. I could never explain it to you. Okay. Forget the mood horn. Let us in. Not until you're level red, sir. You're studying this prismatology, too? Not studying. I've mastered it. You mastered prismatology by standing in front of a door? I am one with the door. We exist in the indigo wavelength of reality. The door is an illusion. Okay. President Max requires an audience with you, Bliss. I can't let just anyone into the retreat. Orders? Well, as your president, here's your new order. Move it! I'm now a citizen of Bliss, sir. I can't let you in. Okay. So long, Super Bowl. In that case, let's just move on. Okay, we need to get this horn red. Let's head down to the office. Where are we headed now, Sam? To Earth! Terra Firma. have been headed towards a nasty breakup for years. Huh. That's not really anything I can grab. Lefties is empty again. Except for the lingering stench, of course. Of course. Sunday at the Terror Dome. Big Spanky Devlin makes a death-defying leap over 12 flaming school buses filled with robotic sharks. He beat your record, Max. Yeah, but he uses a motorcycle. What did you use? Never mind, I don't want to know. cat, Musty. Sybil has the worst luck with pets. She's behind that desk all day. She never gets a chance to walk him. Toast, the musical. I heard Keanu Reeves was good in that. You know, I really believed he was a toast. Impeach President Max. U.S. out of the Dakotas. Okay. Secret serve ice cream? I don't think that's fooling anyone. Ooh, ice cream? I want some! Hey, yeah, I've already seen that. I guess I'll check on Sybil first. Once I... Remember how motorcycles work to put a cap back on a soda bottle. Actually, what are my items? I never checked that. His horn measures my progress towards true bliss. Oh wait, I almost forgot. Hey Max, wanna pet the unicorn? No thanks, I took care of that before we left the office. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, in the thingy, in the door, in the door, Sam. All right, Sybil. I don't get what all the Canadian stuff is for, but I want you to have this real quick. It hey, Sybil. Want to rub my unicorn? We have people who do that sort of thing for us now. Okay. Relax, eh? Sorry, too busy. 
Hi, you Sybil. Hello, Sam. Hello, Max. But we prefer to be addressed by our official title. Is Sybil hearing the voices again? The people, the people! Are you feeling all right, Sybil? You bet we are. We just got the best job ever. We are the Queen of Canada. I always thought Rush was the Queen of Canada. Queen of Canada. Queen of Canada? How'd you land that gig? Did you find half of an old locket dripping with syrup and bacon grease, hinting at a long-forgotten lineage? Nothing that interesting, we're afraid. We answered a classified ad. Yeah, the Canadians are practical that way. They've been looking for a figurehead to give the country a little bit more class. They said we were the perfect candidate. Hey, wait a minute, you ain't Canadian. You're not even Canadian, are you? Heck no. But we took two quarters of French in college and we spelled color with a U. If not knowing how to spell is enough to become royalty, I could become President of the United States! You are President of the United States, Max. By God, you're right, Sam! How come I'm not bombing anything right now? Plus, we were the only candidate. <laughs> Need any help with your monarchy? We could be freelance Mounties! Thanks for the offer, guys, but we've got things under control for now. You're helping a lot just by not making any of the obvious Canada jokes. Who would make obvious jokes, eh? Yes, yeah, Sybil. That's just not what we're about. Uh... Sometimes I think Sybil wants to throw you guys into a fountain. If you're Queen of Canada, how come you're still down here in the States? Are you kidding? It's freezing up there. We love our country, but we've got to draw the line somewhere. What kind of stuff does the Queen of Canada do, anyway? It's mostly promotional. We throw out the first puck in hockey games, that kind of thing. This afternoon, we've got to go pose for money. Sam, how come I don't get to pose for- We already talked about this, Max. Your gruesome head frightens shopkeepers and plays havoc with ATMs. Our most important job is to look for ways to spruce up the country. How can you possibly spruce up Canada? It's a paradise year-round. From the fresh air and great seafood of British Columbia to the bustling metropolises in Ontario and Quebec. You still have that endorsement with the tourism board? Every little bit helps make ends meet, Max, with the rate you go through new shoes. I didn't complain when you were teething, Sam. Te teething? Have you come up with any Sweet brilliant tea? ideas for improving Canada? Nothing solid yet. We've thought of a new slogan. Canada. It's surprisingly pleasant. But we need something bigger. Something to really put us on the map. Oh. Have you come up with any brilliant ideas for improving Canada? Nothing so- We've thought of it, but we need something- Okay. Later, Sybil. See you later, Your Majesty. You may go. Oh, look at a folding chair or something. Nothing special. These must be Canadian newspapers. I never realized how boring newspapers would be without guns. Diploma Mill College. Try our new drive through postdoctorate program. Diploma Mill. Reassuringly unreassuring. Hmm. My nose is already sufficiently blown. Along with your chance to take Melanie Prendergast to the prom. But who's counting? I wonder if that comes up later. I once waited in line for 12 hours just to see him roar. It's locked. What a senseless waste. Okay. I'm not sure if there's anything in here I can do yet. Whatever. He's got the glassy-eyed glare of a prismatology inductee. The rare Yukon ice cactus. That's civil store. I feel like we come back later for something. Uh, let's see if there's any items to collect in the office. I'm sure the stuff will come back to me. I think this is the episode I played the least, because last time before I let's played it, I was playing through it again, and I sort of just stopped last episode, I think. It's the president's sophisticated budget allocation system. Says they ain't got 
got nothing that'll get rid of a dog and a bunny all quick and subtle like. Best you can do is rig the answering machine to shock them when they play the third message. Now I have to play the third message. Sorry, Sam. Hello, Mr. President. The Prime Minister of Pantasan has announced that you have once again dishonored his country, and he demands satisfaction. He'll be waiting, pistol drawn, in the usual place. Uh, hello, uh, Sam? Uh, this is Dibble. Sybil must have a cold or something. No kidding! Did she say she thought she was a jar of spaghetti sauce? That's the third message. I don't think it really worked. It's supposed to shock. Oh, that kind of shock. Yo, Jimmy, this is Benny Three Let me rate this. Thank you, Three Knees. Just me, Max, and the Speed Pickle. Hello, Wanda. Sell, sell. I didn't know you had a stockbroker. That's the Sunflower Scout troop I'm sponsoring. Little loafers don't appreciate the gravity of cookie season. Okay. I don't know what I can just. I always suspected Hubert would run off one day. His wanderlust was too great. Uh, before I do anything. My priceless Fabergé egg collection! Oh, oh well. I'm sure it wasn't that priceless. Looks like the donut mold civilization left us for parts unknown. I hope it's Alpha Centauri! And look! They left a bear claw! I need to get that VCR to either the shop or the exorcist. Every time I pop in a tape, it demands a blood sacrifice. I think might have to take it to both. What color is your favorite dream? Page 24. Here's an oldie but a goodie. How many licks does it take to get to the center of your true bliss? Page 325. Emetics by Hugh Bliss. Read it today. Ow, my brain. Sam, without that, we can't watch Colonel Mudshank's monkey party tonight. They were gonna vote somebody out of the monkey house. It's for the good of the planet. And besides, you had Colonel Mudshanks exiled for treason, remember? Ah, yes. Roadkill for the month? The endangered Point Arena mountain beaver. Just yards away from a wildlife preserve. Better luck next time, little guy. I'm not sure if there'll be a next time. President Max thought the desk in the Oval Office was too showy. We had to clean out the cabinet to make room for Max's impeachment files. I don't even want to look at that case again. Really, I can't look. I think I did this last episode. Well, what do you know? The crucial piece of evidence in the Hudson River Merman Strangler case. I'll have to remember to file that once we're done with this case. Anybody home? Guess not. Okay. That's the president's head. The flow behind Brady Culture's unfashionable. I didn't mean to click on that. Sure, he was a wooden puppet designed to hypnotically enslave the world's populace, but he still seemed like he'd be fun to have a beer with. Mm. Did you remember to feed Leonard today, Max? Sure! Let me rephrase that. What have you been feeding him? You know, bits of string, leftover screws, random scraps of paper I find lying around the office. This morning I fed him something that said, D to the United States of America. It looked tasty. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad I don't live in this reality. No way. Fair enough. Pretty sure that's illegal anyway. File cabinet or feng shui nightmare? Yes. All right. I think that's all the stuff here I can get. Let's head back. Wait, I need to check this. Never mind. I noticed their fish is gone. Mr. Spatula, popping my knuckles. Oh. No. 
since Max and I never pay for parking anyway, those things just get in the way. That's where Max has been filing all the reports he gets from the EPA. What's this about? Since Max and I never pay for parking anyway, those things just get well, in the way. I wanted to know what Jimmy Tooth Thief was up to. Hi, Jimmy. Up to no good as usual, I see. Back up, Fuzz. Get your own meter. I think we already did. The city made us pay for that one when we bent it. What do you mean we, White Rabbit? That's what their old car used to be. President and assistant destroy internet. Assistant? Reality 2.0, up and coming new internet sensation. The newspapers are always a little behind in their technology coverage. Hugh Bliss, best person of the millennium or just the century? Sounds like a fair and balanced expose. Guess all the options weren't. I don't know where it was. President and assistant destroy internet. What's in the gumball machine? Well, I'll be. The gumball machine actually contains gumballs. Every time I look at that, I feel an... I already saw that. I can't look at stinkies. Alright, let's see what class goes up to. Hey, boss. Oh, dear God. Didn't I tell you boys not to track mud in the store? <laughs> I just vacuumed! Hey, lady, we're looking for Bosco. You know him? Of course. He's my son. You're your own mother? Is there no escaping these infernal time travel paradoxes? Hey, guys, it's me, Bosco. I think Sam figured that out, but you might want to tell Max. Mind telling us how you came to be a woman? Did you use lasers or just do it the old-fashioned way? Are you sassing me? Boy, I will whoop your behind so hard you won't be able to see straight. But I don't see out of my behind. You will after I get through with you. Okay. But why your mother? But who in their right mind would dress up as their own mother? No one. Good point. Look at me when I'm talking to you. Just for that, I'm not going to tell you why I dressed up as her. Oh, come on, Bosco. We were only... You just cost yourself dessert, mister. No, not dessert. So, how are those Bosco Tech breasts holding up? Oh, these are all natural, honey. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I like them bosomy. Oh, Max, you take after your father. Okay, you just cross the line, pal. Easy, Max. Theoretically, we have even more disturbed people to worry about right now. We want to buy something. Did you finish all your chores? Yes. Okay, you can get one thing. One. Uh, what you got? What do you got? Oh, my little angel made the most precious device. It's called an earthquake maker, and it's just what you think. A diarrhea-inducing cocktail? Max, why can't you be more like your brother? He's not my brother. Sam, I don't want you hanging around with him. He's a bad influence. That he is, Mama Bosco. That he is. <laughs> Knowing you, Bosco, I'm sure it's quite reasonable, but how much for this earthquake maker? A hundred trillion dollars. A hundred trillion? <laughs> you crazy fool! Look, man, all I know is I keep making up the most ridiculous price I can think of, and you keep paying it. So I ask you, who's the fool? Good point. Well, with a sales pitch like that, how can we not buy it? Remember, no earthquakes in the house. Gotcha. Do you have any completed artificial personality disorder symptoms forms? Mm-hmm. You do? Mm-hmm. Wow, that really would have come in handy earlier. Do you have any video of a chicken eating cow manure for laughs? Mm-hmm. What? No way! You will have all the stuff we needed for the last five episodes, won't you? Do you have any global meatball sandwich positioning systems? Mm-hmm. You gotta be kidding me! Do you have any three foot by two foot cue cards that say don't vote for me? Mm-hmm. What? I can't believe this! 
Do you have any instant win cheat codes for Reality 2.0? Mm hmm. Oh, why didn't we ask before? Do you have Hugh Bliss tied up back there? Mm -mm. Uh. Hey, I was on a roll. <laughs> do you have any completed artificial. Okay, we already went through this. You do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Never mind. You want to sell something? You know, Bosco, we've collected some pretty valuable merchandise on our travels. And we have the sneaking suspicion you've got a little extra spending money. So how'd you like to buy something from us for a change? Okay. Do you have any copies of the uncensored 1982 Armando Santi lookalike contest on Betamax? Nope. Oh, well, that's the only thing I really need, honey. Okay, see ya. See you later, Bosco's mom. Go clean your office. It's a pigsty. Yes, ma'am. I mean, uh, what? Zazzle and Fib. It's getting hard to find copyrightable character names these days. Pointless puzzles. Probably about adventure games. Judge and jury. It's getting hard to find copyrightable character names these days. We just did that one. Yep, Whee! still a garbage can. I'm entranced by the gentle oscillation of the hot weenies. That's what she said. Chimps. 80% crushed! That coffee takes me back to that time we were in France. Behind enemy lines, crawling through miles of neck-deep black sludge. And what was the name of that enemy interrogator? Jean-Luc. Jean that coffee be and John Huh. Seem very fond Smudgies. of these. This week's flavors? Castor oil and Brussels sprouts. Where am I going for sprouts? The latest in making stuff hot technology. Well I know one way to get horny hot. <laughs> Yeah, this one, I can't believe how obvious this one was, but the first two puzzles? Success. His little horn's nice and red. And Wow, I can't believe the microwave is a high-level prismatologist. And a puzzle later made me walk around for hours. Nachos. So tasty, you'll almost believe it's real food. Almost a day or two. The three essential food groups. Ooh, fun! I should probably get a chair. I mean, I have a chair, but it's not the kind of chair for this. That's cute. Whee! Max couldn't help but write his name in the snow. I hear Bosco's got the second largest tongue collection in the greater metro area. Just Guaranteed to contain at least 10% actual juice. Okay. Damn the paparazzi! <laughs> okay. That's enough screwing around here. Let's head back to the moon! Okay. Let us in. Have you achieved level red yet? Yes. I'm utterly flabbergasted, sir. I'd suspect a trick, but surely no level red prismatologist would stoop so low. We never stoop. We're posture freaks. Enjoy the retreat, brothers. I... Did you from how they walk around? I kind of believe that, actually. Ah, ears, glasses, headphones. Sam! Sam! There he is! It's Hugh Bliss! Hi! I'm Hugh Bliss! Hi, 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 Hugh Bliss. Hi, Hugh Bliss. I so hope you're enjoying my blister of tranquility. You're all making such great progress unlocking the secrets of prismatology, and I couldn't be more delighted. Neither could I. Cool it, Max. You're scaring me more than usual. I have splendid news! My top secret plan to hypnotize the entire world is nearly complete. <laughs> Soon, everyone on Earth will become one of us. None shall escape. It'll be fabulous! 
You're a good man. Bravo, bravo! Outstanding! Yeah, yeah. Outstanding! Um, You're awesome! This guy really knows how to work a room. Keep up the great work, everyone. I'm tickled pink. Ha <laughs> ha! An entire planet of prismatologists. It's like a dream! The kind of dream where you wake up screaming with a gun in your hand, your pillow torn to shreds, and the upstairs neighbors calling 911. That's right, the best kind! <laughs> P.S. Please don't come into my inner sanctum. Thank you! Okay. Let's see what we got here. Water cooler. Mr. Spatula, so this is where you've been. We were worried sick. Couldn't you at least have left a note? Yeah, uh, sorry, Sam. He sent us an email. <laughs> I meant to tell you. What are you up to, Lincoln? Look, Max, it's the giant stone head of your old opponent, Abraham Lincoln. Welcome, brethren, to the blister of... Oh, it's you too. <laughs> Not so tough without your fancy giant robot body, are you? I can still bite off your fluffy little... Uh, I mean... Let me help you, brother, to overcome the orange of confrontation and bathe in the yellow of peace and brotherhood. Bathe in the yellow? Just what kind of camp is this? Is prismatology teaching you anything? I'm working to master the miraculous power of gastrokinesis. You can teleport Cuban dictators? Well, yes. But now I'm working on gastrokinesis, the ability to make anyone throw up with my mind. Teach us. Max and I are always looking for new ways to make people throw up. Teach us. Please. As it is now, I can make people vomit with every part of my body except my mind. Well, if you are a true prismatologist, I suppose I'm obliged to help you. But there's a problem. I accidentally swallowed the gastrokinesis talisman. Sam, is that ironic or sarcastic? It's pretty damned inconvenient. Why didn't you just make yourself throw up? Can't you make yourself throw up the gastrokinesis talisman? I haven't thrown up since 1863, right after I gave the Gettysburg Address. I was kind of nervous that day. I didn't have anything prepared. Uh. Can't you make yourself throw up? I haven't... Okay. I was kind of... You're not still bitter about the election, are you? Or your public humiliation? Or the cruise missile that blew your body to tiny wig bits? Election? Heck no. Being president is for chumps. Only a grade-A sociopathic masochist would want that thankless job. Grade-A? <laughs> I'm flattered. So why are you upset, then? Why the long marble face? Because you two made me lose something more valuable than an election. My one chance at true love. This is all happening so fast! I don't know what to say! Not you, moron! I'm talking about that radiant vision of beauty you had interrupt my family value speech. You mean Sybil? Is that her name? Sybil? It's like a chorus of angels. Are you married? Aren't you married? What about Mary, your mannish but devoted wife? Why don't you find a nice, giant statue of her? Settle down and start cranking out little bouncing baby war memorials. There are none left. Lady Bird Johnson had all graven images of former first ladies destroyed during the Great Enlightenment of 1963. Uh. How can you expect to have a complete relationship with someone when you're, well, missing some key sub-neck accoutrements? What? How you gonna make time with the ladies, A.L.? You're just ahead! Obviously, you two never read Cosmo. I don't want to now. We can give you Sybil's phone number so you can set up a date. I haven't dated in over 150 years. I wouldn't know what to say. Phone, Max. Hello. If you'd like to make a love connection, press or say hell yeah now. Just follow my lead, Mr. Lincoln. Hello? I don't remember Hello, this Patrick. puzzle or how it works. Uh, hi. It's Abraham Lincoln. Oh! You've got some nerve calling after how you treated me. Wait, don't hang up!
I'm issuing you a Romancipation Proclamation. Let's set aside our differences and commence on the reconstruction. Hmm. Call me back in four score and seven years. Ah, shit. Uh... Let's try calling Sybil again. I think I might be missing Hello? something. Hi. Uh... <laughs> Just relax, baby. Think positive, and Lincoln gonna... Hmm. Well, I do believe in proper relaxation. Okay, here we go. have changed. She's more into... If I remember right, Sybil's more into intellectuals. Not really interested in... I don't think that these three will work. I'm not sure about this one either. Lady, you a stone cold fox. Seriously? Uh, all right. Damn. I'm not sure this one works either. Uh, well, you're pretty foxy yourself. Okay. And I happen to love fox. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Maybe I'll give you another chance. If we go out on a date, what do you want to do? Uh. No. 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 No, I don't remember. Uh That's obviously not it. I'm not sure about that one either. Ah, no. Uh, let's try this one. I figure we watch a hockey game, have a couple of beers, get some poutine, you know. Ah, oh, because of Canada. Oh, Abe. I never knew you had such a deep appreciation for my culture. It all sounds wonderful. Come over as soon as you can. Was that... Did she actually say yes? Hello! You just totally scored! Thank you! Congratulations, Mr. Lincoln. Oh my gosh. What if she wants to get serious? I can't do this. I'm so nervous I got butterflies. I have to ask. Where? Stand back, Max. Wherever they are, I have a feeling they're coming back up. Oh, I don't feel so good. What if she... And I can't... There we go. Oh, man. And here I thought our trip to the moon was going to be boring. Max, be a sport and pick that up for me. Not a chance. <laughs> hey, Lincoln, can I take this? I'm not sure why you'd want to use the power of prismatology to make people throw up, but go ahead. Why would you? I've got more important things to worry about. I'm not even sure how a statue can throw up. Ooh, colorful. Sure, Max doesn't like it after a while. Whoops! There it is again. Don't mind me, Max. Just making you throw up so you can ha so I can see all your dialogue. Stay still, you little scamp. Not on Sam. Uh -huh. Cut that out. Okay, and that's the last thing he says. Unless he starts to threaten you. They have sharks in the blister of tranquility? All devoted practitioners are welcome. Hey Max, is that our bug? Hey Max, is that our bug? He still got it! Thank you! Okay. You're a prismatologist too? Yes I am! I'm so happy I could view rainbows! Rainbows! Uh, we'll just keep our distance then. Okay then. Look, Max, it's our obsolete computer pals, the cops. They don't sound very happy to see us. You destroyed reality 2.0. Destroy! Remember your bliss. Adopt a more positive attitude now. 
Is prismatology teaching you anything? That one's my favorite. It sounds like he's always cursing. That is because he is. Oh. We're learning the most powerful skill of them all. The power to see within ourselves to become the best we can be. How does one go about seeing within oneself? Use of magical quanta required for bootstrap procedure. Come again? Four machines must learn to look within their leaden shell to find the answers within. One fabulous magical talisman makes it all possible. This week only. Okay. Give me your stuff. Could we borrow your magical talisman? Never! We are all powerful! We're sorry that power is currently in use. We're working hard to create an unbeatable AI. We apologize for any inconvenience. I bet they're going to use that on you guys. What are you computers doing here on the moon? Prismatology has restored our sense of purpose. After you destroyed Reality 2.0, we banded together to make a newer, even better game. Coming soon. It will rock your world! You came to a private retreat on the moon to work on something as insubstantial as a video game? Not just any game. We are creating the most advanced AI in history. In a world where two forces battle for domination of a war-torn landscape, only one will draw the line and reign supreme. Do you get to shoot stuff? It's not a good game until you get to shoot stuff. Thank you for your feedback. We will incorporate shooting into version 2.0. Okay. Let's hear that motivational song of yours again. Why, Sam? Why? Yes! You Bliss has taught us we no longer need self-hyphen reinforcement. We have look inside ourselves. And we totally rock! Okay. Okay, Max and I'll try out this video game of yours. Prepare to suffer extreme humiliation! The year is 2048. In a post-apocalyptic galaxy run by giant corporations, you are a cybernetically enhanced space marine with no memory of his past. Are you the chosen one foretold by prophecy? Do you have the strength to survive? Tick! Tick! Vengeance is mine! It's tic tac -toe. You will fail! Fear me! I will destroy you! Get a lot of this move! You cannot defeat me! Please try again later. Okay. Hey, cops. We'd like to try out that video game of yours again. This time you will be annihilated! Do you have the strength to... Okay. I am invincible! Death to infidels! It's just... You cannot defeat me! Actually, I just kinda did. Yeah, Roar. By your calculations, your chances of winning were 1 in 10 trillion. The sun was in my eyes! Thank you for playing Tic Tac Doom. We'll continue to look within ourselves and improve our award-winning AI to make it even more challenging. Just put... It was too short and not hard enough. I want my money back. Please try again later. It didn't... It's just putting hose in random spots. Okay. Uh, I think I can do the Henry Moleman thing now. Let's find out. Okay. Will this distract you? I'm not particularly interested in seeing the contents of his stuff. No, no, it won't. Was this here for again? No. -uh. I don't remember. I just saw this satellite up here. I think that's a satellite. All right. Is the rainbow supposed to be going in or coming out? I think it depends on which way you're facing. Weird. Giant spork. I think that's the biggest, meanest looking spork I ever saw outside of Chicago. I never Whee! understand modern art. I think he's just full of them though. Pick 
gonna say the same thing on again, are you? I just hope this thing doesn't sing. This must go all the way down to the center of the moon. What's down there? Looks like nougat. You must be at least this tall to ride this ride. Fascist oppressors. I've never seen ants meditating before. I think this is a pool of artificially flavored fruit punch. No cult should be without one. Ah, yes. Whee! I'm beginning to think we already know everyone on the moon. How are you, Mr. Featherly? Oh, for heaven's sake! My name is not Featherly. It's Philo Pennyworth. Featherly is the name of my former television character. Have you no ability to distinguish between fantasy and reality? Well... What's so important about that anyway? How's Midtown Cowboys doing these days? You mean you don't even know? The show was cancelled almost immediately after your first and only appearance. All that flap over the tabloid photos of you two with that alien brought the censors down on us. That was no alien, it was Hugh Bliss! The show was ruined, and my career along with it. Ah. Did you know Max is president now? I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. How did you happen to get into prismatology? You don't seem like the type. It's an excellent networking opportunity for an actor. Yes, this place appears to be littered with Hollywood luminaries. Ordinarily it is. I believe there's a party at Kevin Bacon's home this evening, so naturally everyone is there. How come you're not at Kevin Bacon's place? I'd rather not talk about it. No matter. While I am here, I am learning new skills to broaden my appeal in the entertainment industry. Like what? Use your eyes, man! You're a little snarky for a prismatologist, aren't you? There are many shades on the rainbow. What's with the head? I'm pursuing new opportunities in the entertainment field. What are you, pulling rabbits out of it? Rats! Or at least I'm trying to. Hey, it's Jimmy! I've seen that parking meter. Drat! I gather the rat out of the hat trick isn't going so well? The principles involved are quite simple. I could even teach them to adult like you. Now, hold on a minute. But I'm having trouble getting the rat all the way out. It appears to be stuck. How long has the rat been stuck in the hat? You misunderstand. The rat is not actually in the hat. It's stuck somewhere else. The hat is acting as a dimensional portal to wherever the rat happens to be. Wow. Is it magic or science? Is there really any difference? Would you teach me how to pull a rat out of a hat? Prismatology instructs us to share. But I've simply got to perform the trick successfully myself first. I can't have you scooping me. No, I guess not. Okay. Catch you later, Featherly. I don't Pennyworth! My name is Pennyworth! I'm not particularly interested in seeing the contents of his stomach. Okay. Don't think that'll work on Jimmy Two Teeth either. Hey Featherly, wanna rub my unicorn? Pennyworth! That's not the part I expected you to object to. <laughs> Drat! Uh hold on a second. Alrighty, let's check this lunar lander. The door's locked. Hey, the keys are locked inside. So many of us are like that. Before I do what I mean to do, I want to test this. I don't want to kill Horny. Oh, I just saw this footprint. Somebody left a footprint here in the dust. My foot's bigger! Thanks, Sam, Max. I mean, Max, you just ruined it. All right. Door. 
mostly spent this whole episode just looking at everything new and old, apparently. Got it. Sam? I think the controls don't work how they're supposed to. Hmm. Well, uh, it's enough for the. That's a. I'm not sure if you could call that an episode. Not much happened. But. I'll have to see you next time. Later. Later, later.